September 14th meeting of the Civil Service Commission. And we have roll call, please. Commissioner Hatamian. Here. Manukian. Here. Gregorian. Here. Gantis. Here. Devine. Here. And the first item, please. Minutes for July 13th and August 24th. Okay, for the July 13th meet minutes, uh, do we have a motion to approve? Um, Actually, uh, only three of us can vote on it. It would be uh, Commissioner Hatamian, Commissioner Manukian, and myself. So. Move to approve. I second. Okay, and that will be unanimous consent. For the minutes of the August 24th meeting, uh, that would be everyone except uh, Commissioner Hatamian. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. There is a typographical error under item number eight. The third line, Matt Doyle agreed to incorporate, not incorporated, incorporate additional information. With that, I would agree that it can be approved. Okay, and we'll say unanimous consent with that correction. Next item, please. Oral communications. I have no cards. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the commission on any item not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to the next item. Recruitment and examination status report. Mr. Doyle. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, this item is, uh, is a note and file, and it is a listing of the current recruitment activity amongst the staff. It shows uh, mostly the recruitments that are occurring, either about to open or that have opened and have uh, examination dates scheduled. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, somewhat of a moderate uh, level of uh, recruitment at this time. Uh, if you have any questions on any of these uh, recruitments or the assignments, I'd uh, be happy to try and answer those questions. Are there any questions? <laughs> Mr. Gannis? No. Oh, okay. We'll move on to the next item. Eligible, eligible list established. Mr. Doyle? Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, uh, this item represents the eligible lists that have been established since our last meeting. As you can see from the list, we have a total of seven uh, uh, recruitments that have been completed. Uh, four of those were promotional to uh, open, and one of them is promotional and open. As uh, the listing indicates, we have one column showing the total number of applications received, and then the column on the far right shows the uh, total number who successfully made it through each of the phases of those recruitment processes to make it onto the eligible lists. As you can see, some of the processes had a uh, significant number of uh, candidates, and uh, ultimately our objective is to make sure we have a good uh, quality list of eligible candidates. And again, if you have any questions on any of these uh, recruitment processes or exams, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Uh, this, too, is a note and file item. Do we have any questions? Okay, we'll move on to the next item, please. Revised class specification for approval, construction inspector series. Mr. Doyle? Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, we have a, a couple of uh, class spec uh, revisions uh, for you this evening. The first is the construction inspector series. This is a, uh, a just a revision, and this, these uh, specs have not been updated since uh, 1992. So this is part of our on ongoing uh, means of, uh, of updating our, our specifications. Uh, these classifications are found within the engineering section of public works. Um, really a, not a significant uh, number of changes, just a lot of cleanup. Um, there is a, a uh, I'd say the most substantial change would be the experience requirement for the supervisor uh, position. We're increasing that from three years to five years. Um, and I think the idea behind that is that the position does have a, a great deal of authority uh, over particularly the other areas in this uh, series. Um, other than that, uh, really most of the uh, revisions are just, uh, you know, just general update and making these specifications more contemporary. Um, I will note, uh, if you looked at the organization chart, uh, it does show the, the, where these positions fall. Uh, we do not have, uh, we're, we're currently not utilizing the construction supervisor classification. Right now that's being, uh, those duties are being handled mostly by a senior construction inspector uh, classification. But uh, again, as with any series, uh, we don't necessarily utilize all of the uh, titles within that particular series at, a, at, at all times. So uh, anyway, but it, this, uh, this is the, the series for your review. 
if you have any questions, uh, again, I'd be happy to try and answer them. We have representatives from the department here as well, if you have questions. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners have questions? Not just for the sake of clarification. And uh, do we have any openings for this position, or this is for the future? This is, uh, Commissioner Gregorian, this is mainly for the future. Uh, I, will, I will say that, uh, again, if you look at the org chart, the uh, senior construction inspector is, uh, it's under the, it's in the, bottom right-hand corner senior construction inspector, which is more or less being used in a supervisory or lead worker capacity. Um, that position right now is vacant, but we are doing a recruitment right now for that, and that's a promotional recruitment. So we anticipate bringing somebody from within, and uh, uh, at some point, if, if we have you know, uh, more growth in this particular area, we may uh, bring back the supervisor position, but for now, it'll be a senior. So. Any other questions? Move to approve. Second. We'll have unanimous consent on that one. Next item, please. Revised class specification for approval, electrical helper. Mr. Doyle. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a revision of the uh, class specification for electrical helper. This is a single classification uh, uh, spec. Uh, this is a position within our electrical section within Glendale Water and Power performing semi-skilled work, assisting with the various construction and maintenance crews within uh, GWP. Um, there are not a great deal of changes uh, uh, within this, this, uh, this group. Um, really just uh, the specification talks about uh, a few more specifics on some of the duties, including a lot of the, uh, uh, I think there's a greater emphasis on safety now than there had been in the past, so a lot of, a lot of uh, language relating to you know, setting up cones and barricades and things like that. Um, this is an important position, uh, working within our, our electrical section. They have to be rated to be able to work in, uh, in and around electricity. Uh, oftentimes they're out in the middle of the road, so safety and, uh, and such is, is, is very significant. So, um, But again, uh, uh, most of the uh, revisions to this specification are, are somewhat routine, and again, just to, to make sure these specs are updated and contemporary. Um, we have uh, representatives from the department here. If you have any questions, uh, Ms. Kasparian from my staff who worked on this is here as well. <coughs> Thank you. Are there any questions on yes, this? Yes, question. Yes, Mr. Gregorian. As I recall, uh, could I ask you or Mr. Ramon uh, my question? Uh, you can. Well, as I recall, a few years ago, we did have an incident, and uh, one of our uh, helper was killed. And uh, Feynman. Does it... Am I right, Mr. I've seen some head shake no in the audience, so maybe we can get an explanation on that. It fell down from the ladder or from up there? No, good afternoon. Exactly, two, uh, 2005. No, that, that happened, I believe, in 1997, where we had an employee which was a lineman that fell off the pole. 97? That, that passed away. It was, excuse it's been me. A while. Anyway, it, the it date was, is not, is not it was, important. It was 2003, and that Something was like a, that. electrical lineman. The line. The That's line. an individual who actually climbs the poles. These individuals don't. See. So I've seen lots of delete, uh, deleted items over here. I would like to see, have we considered any kind of a safety measures for these helpers? This, uh, this is Brian Brown. He, uh, he's the operations supervisor for the electrical section. So. Where's the question? <laughs> The question was that I've seen lots of uh, items has been deleted over here. My question is in regard of safety measures. Have we considered any safety as far as these line helpers or these helpers, these people who's going to work over here? Safety as far as? As far as the climbing, uh, the ladders going up and down with the... Uh, well, this is an entry level position. Once they come in this position, they'd be trained in our safety procedures and trained in any function that they'd be asked to do. I see. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Move to approve. I do have one question. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Um, is this a future item as well, Mr. Doyle? Is this... Uh, again, this is an existing classification. There are, we probably have four, three, maybe four electrical four. helpers currently. I don't four. believe we have any vacancies at this point. Is no. that correct? So, okay, because I'm looking on the org chart. Yes. 
And on the org chart, I show a total of five electric helpers. Yes. And we currently have four. Uh, that was just an estimation. Oh, just okay. So, do we know how many we have? Electric helpers currently in your four, department. I believe we have four currently. One was promoted, I believe, a year ago to a to a line truck operator. Okay. Then we that position was filled with an apprentice. Okay. So what I can I am I assuming there's there's supposed to be four rather than five, or do we have one vacant p position open? I, I believe what Mr. Brown said was uh, uh, an individual was promoted. It, it, what you see generally in an org chart are the budgeted positions. So if someone leaves or promotes to another position, that budgeted position is still there. But I believe what he said was uh, the individual, one of the helpers, got promoted to a, a uh, another position, and they took that position and and reallocated it to a apprentice. lineman apprentice. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. So we have five funded positions. Uh, no more. Uh, no more. Uh, it would be. It would be four now. It would be four. So the org chart should technically say four. Correct. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further questions, I believe it was moved, moved to approve. And second. Second. And we'll have unanimous consent on that one, please. Next item, please. Revised class specification for approval: electrical engineering series and electrical engineer series. Well. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, uh, these are two series uh, in the engineering area. This is These are professional engineering uh, uh, type positions. And we've broken them into two, two uh, series. One is the electrical engineering series, which uh, includes the electrical engineering assistant and associate. Uh, and then the second one is the electrical engineer series. And typically when you see the term electrical engineer, that connotates a, a registered professional engineer, uh, someone that possesses the, uh, the professional engineering uh, registration with the state of California. Um, again, the first series uh, uh, addresses uh, the, the two classifications uh, that don't yet possess the the, uh, the PE license, as it were. And the second series, uh, the electrical engineer one, two, senior, and the principal uh, all are in the, uh, uh, they require the professional engineer uh, designation. Um, throughout these series, uh, you see minor, minor changes. Uh, some of the points that have come up, uh, uh, maybe greater emphasis on interaction with the public, greater emphasis on customer service, uh, uh, once again, greater emphasis on safety, and there's discussion about uh, the specific general orders, uh, uh, GO 95, 128, 165, and these are all um, just newer, uh, newer regulations and new information that uh, these engineers are expected to, to know. Um, with that, uh, if you have any questions, I'd uh, be happy to try and answer them. Uh, Mr. Abueg is here, is here, and he can help uh, answer any questions you may have as well. So. Hey, thank you. Do we have any questions on this series? You know, is there a motion? <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. And we'll have unanimous consent on that one. Move right on to the next item, please. Revised class specification for approval, Assistant City Clerk Series. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, this is a revision of the Assistant City Clerk uh, series. Uh, obviously, this is a, a classification within the City Clerk's office. Um, it's kind of an unusual situation in that uh, this is a series, yet uh, typically the City only utilizes one or the other of these two classifications. Um, typically, this represents the number two uh, to Mr. Kasaki and uh, or whoever is the the city clerk, um, in years past we've utilized the deputy. Uh, years we've used, some years we've used the assistant, and typically uh, um, I would define the difference between the two as uh, the assistant it tends to be a little more experienced uh, individual than the than the deputy. Um, this uh, these specifications do have some significant changes. Uh, this occupation has become a, a somewhat complex. A lot of legalistic uh, changes. 
the specification is more detailed and there's more information about uh, you know, the Brown Act and the posting and publication of meetings, uh, fair political practice uh, commission rulings. Um, there's a whole series on uh, ethics trainings and a whole series of uh, knowledges, skills, and abilities relating to the elections. Uh, this has all become far more complex than it uh, ever was in the past. Um, so, uh, again, this is once again an attempt to, to update this, this, uh, uh, this series, make sure it's more contemporary. Uh, we've also beefed up the minimum requirements a little bit, uh, particularly with the assistant uh, position, uh, adding a, an additional year of experience requirement. And also for both, uh, we're requiring uh, the bachelor's degree, which uh, was not uh, previously a, a requirement in the past. So uh, again, very, very important position, very key uh, to the city and to our city clerk. And, uh, and uh, this is here for your review this evening. Uh, if you have questions, uh, again, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Uh, Artie Kasakian is here, uh, if you have questions for him. And, uh, Mr. Soto from my staff uh, worked on this as well. So, Thank you. Mr. Dantas. Um, I share Mr. Doyle's uh, uh, characterization. This is a very serious position, and my comments are not, Mr. Kasaki, intended to, to uh, disparage uh, anybody in the office or yourself, uh, because ostensibly the city clerk is an elected position. I mean, arguably, you could elect anybody. They don't have to have a bachelor's. They don't, it, it, it is not, there's no requirement because it's an elected position. So I think it's critically important that we have uh, a, a deputy and or assistant that indeed has a bachelor's and has the experience that, that's been proposed here. So I think the, the, and the, and the qualifications. So I think this is, is, is becomes even more critically important. And, and, and I believe that the staff has done an excellent job in, in culling through the uh, requirements and, and increasing the requirements, particularly with respect to the bachelor's degree. So I'm prepared to make a motion to approve. I just have one comment. I didn't see anywhere in here where it said this person was responsible for doing the employee evaluations on time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's a city clerk. <laughs> <laughs> we have no relation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Okay, Second. and that's unanimous consent. Thank you, Mr. Kazakian. Okay, move on to the next item, please. Agenda forecast. Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, uh, the item before you is the agenda forecast. There is no action required of this, but uh, it's simply a forecast document to see what's what's coming up. Uh, as you know, our, our, our public meetings have been somewhat light lately, but uh, our uh, closed session meetings have been plentiful, and uh, I do recognize and appreciate the hard work that the Commission has been doing on various closed session items. Um, which have been uh, taking a great deal of your time for the past uh, past few months um, and will likely continue for a few months. But uh, the items we have uh, before you in the future uh, uh, are, are listed on the report. Uh, we do anticipate bringing before you the Civil Service Commission annual report, which typically we have in uh, uh, October uh, in, the, in that area, and that covers all of the activity that uh, has, has occurred with regard to the staff and various things that we've done uh, over the, the previous fiscal year. Uh, we also have an item to bring back uh, that uh, Commissioner Manukian had asked relative to uh, CalPERS, and we are going to be working on something uh, on that uh, in, in the future. So. Uh, uh, again, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add or have us uh, uh, work on, I'd uh, be happy to, to, to do so. I would like to make a couple of corrections. On uh, sure. October 12th, I will be here. And uh, on a, the uh, meeting of the 28th, September 28th, uh, I believe Commissioner Gregorius yes. said he was going to be absent also that yes. day. So, okay. And I had mentioned that with just three commissioners, if there's a very light load that day, you might want to consider canceling that meeting. Okay. So. Any other comments on the forecast? Not. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. I would just have one inquiry. In, in order to, since we won't have either the chairman or the vice chairman present, I'm assuming, do you need us as a, bo as a body to give you direction to, uh, that to you can cancel it at your discretion or one of the commissioner's discretion? Because normally it's done with the chairman, as I recall. Or, or, that is correct. And I think he's going to be not available by telephone or, or otherwise. I've given him uh, 
permission. Yeah, but I don't. I think we do. We I don't. Um, I, if it is, is he allowed to delegate that to you? I don't have a problem. I just want to know if we need to do. Are you going to give permission to commission again? Please? No, I don't need to do it. I just want to know that we're How doing about a power attorney. I don't need a power of attorney. <laughs> no, I, I said that if in his judgment, if he feels the workload is uh, minimal, he can cancel that meeting. And I concur if that's necessary. Both yeah. yourself. Okay, thank you, Mr. Doyle. Uh, next item. Reports and information passed to employee performance evaluations. Mr. Gannis, would you like to do the honors on that one? I would like to do that. And the very first one, our city clerk has left, and he took your your uh, challenge, and he's correct. There are no past dues from our city clerk's office, as well as the city manager's office, the city treasurer's office, fire department, the Glendale Water and Power, the library, and the police all do not have any past dues. And out of 1,721 salaried employee counts, we have 28, which are either first notices or second notices, which is, again, a continuing of very good progress in our, our uh, employee evaluations. Okay. okay. Thank you. Next item. Civil Service Commission and our staff comments. Do the commissioners have comments? Staff? Seeing none. Next item. Closed session. Okay. We um, will, uh, it's possible we will report out of closed session, but we will not be doing so on TV. I think, Mr. Chairman, this ends the TV. That's right. Uh, we're going to be going into closed session. Uh, there's two items for closed session. Uh, we will doing, be doing the past in case first and uh, the what case? You, you are going to do the two items, is that correct? No, we're going to, we're going to do the two, with two items. Thank you. Uh, we'll we will reporting. adjourn at this time, and we may report out. Reporting out. Well, we will be reporting out uh, after, after the first one. Okay. And with that, uh, we'll go into closed session. Mentioned.